Despite its relationship to crocodiles, Ornithosuchus was able to walk on its hind legs, like many dinosaurs. However, it probably spent most of its time on all fours, only moving bipedally when it needed to run rapidly. Reconstructions of the jaw musculature of Venaticosuchus showed that it had a slow, strong bite, similar to those of herbivorous atosaurs. Combinations of features suggested that they ate meat but were poorly adapted for dealing with living prey. Revueltosaurus was first believed to have represented a very primitive Erythischian dinosaur because the teeth were very similar. It is actually a basal crocodile with a herbivorous preference. Adosaurs are considered to have been entirely terrestrial herbivorous animals. Some forms have characteristics that may have been adaptations to digging for food. There is evidence that some made nests, they were very heavily armored, most certainly as a defense against predators. Staganolopus had no teeth in the front of its jaws, but instead had a beak-like tip that arched upwards. This would have allowed it to uproot plants in a similar manner to a modern pig. The peg-like teeth at the back of its mouth would have been suitable for chewing tough vegetation. Paratypothorax possesses pyramidian scutes that are wide, strap-like, and have grooves and pits on them forming radial patterns. Most osteoderms are heavily pitted on their upper surfaces and smooth on their undersides. Their centers are made of cancellous or spongy bone and their outer portions are made up of compact bone. In life, these plates were probably covered in horn. These horns are especially noticeable in Desmodosuchines such as Longosuchus. Osteoderms are useful in diagnosing Adosaur taxa, and Adosaur species can often be identified from individual scutes based on their ornamentation pattern. Bones and armor pieces of Desmodosuchus are abundant in the Dockham Formation, indicating that they were widespread and abundant during the Late Triassic. It is possible that they traveled in packs or family units. This is evidenced by several findings of multiple specimen skeletons in relatively small areas. The armor and spikes of Desmodosuchus were its only ways to defend itself from predators, they are the only adosaurs known to have possessed spines like these. The skull of Saurosuchus is wider at the back than at the snout which not only suggests housing for strong biting muscles but also eyes that were slightly angled forwards for depth perception. This would allow for easier prey location as well as timing of strikes so that it could more successfully deliver a mortal bite that would result in the death of the prey. Hesperosuchus was a terrestrial animal, where its speed and ability to run fast is the most advantageous as a fitness trait. Northern Arizona's landscape during the Triassic period was surrounded by numerous bodies of water like lakes and streams. This supports that it likely lived close to water although being a full on land dwelling animal. Such as Terrestricicus, the legs were positioned directly beneath the body. Fossil evidence also shows that they were digitigrade, supporting their weight on only fingers. As an early crocodile relative, Protosuchus skull featured more crocodilian characteristics than its earlier ancestors, it had short jaws that broadened out at the base of the skull, providing a large surface to which its jaw muscles could attach. Caprosuchus is thought to have been a primarily if not exclusively terrestrial predator. Evidence for this behavior includes the positioning of the orbits laterally and somewhat anteriorly, which suggests an overlap in vision. The surfaces of the premaxillae are rugose with the edges elevated above the body of the bone, suggesting that a keratinous shield would have been supported by the rugosities at the tip of the snout. It has been named Borcroc in reference to its unusually large caniniform teeth which resemble those of a boar.
Lagonosicus would have stayed motionless for hours, waiting for prey to swim into its open jaws with spike-shaped teeth. It has been named Pancakerock is reference to the shallow depth of its skull. The skulls of stomatosuchids are said to be platyrostral because they have unusually flattened, elongate, duck-shaped craniums with U-shaped jaws. It is difficult to determine exactly what do they ate. The mandible may have been toothless in the stomatosuchus jaws and may have supported a pelican-like throat pouch. Notosuchus was small when compared to most other crocodiles, though itself still larger than most known Notosuchian genera, it spent most of their time roaming about on dry land, only approaching water to drink. It would have lived like a modern-day wild pig, sniffing through the undergrowth and leaf litter, using smell to identify food that was otherwise hidden from other animals. Anatosicus is considered to have a diet of small, aquatic creatures and to get them it may have waited in water like a heron. It has a very specialized skull and the jaws resemble the bill of a duck with a single pointed protrusion extending from the front of the snout. Simosicus was also fully terrestrial. Features of the skull such as the clove-shaped teeth strongly suggest terrestrial herbivora. The short tail would have had little use in swimming. It has light osteoderms covering much of the back, belly, and limbs. Armadillosicus is mammal-like with its heavy body armor characterized by flexible bands and rigid shields that covered its back, less like the traditional osteoderms that line the backs of most Kurotarzans and more like that of a modern armadillo. Because of its unique morphology, it is believed to have had a fossorial lifestyle. Barosicus is seen as a terrestrial predator, living in a hot and arid climate, it was likely able to dig holes for finding water in dry seasons or, like modern alligators do, for thermoregulation. The laterally compressed snout of Barosicus and Iborosicus may have enabled them to withstand high forces during biting. The teeth are also laterally compressed, pointed, and serrated. Their shape would have allowed them to easily penetrate and slice flesh. Sarcosicus is one of the largest crocodile-like reptiles that ever lived, it was almost twice as long as the modern saltwater crocodile. It would have eaten large terrestrial prey such as the abundant dinosaurs that lived in the same region. At the end of its snout, Sarcosicus presented an expansion, known as a bulla, which has been compared to the gara seen in males gharials. However, the bulla is present in all Sarcosicus skulls that have been found so far, suggesting that it was not a sexually dimorphic trait. The purpose of this structure remains enigmatic. Thaladosuchians are colloquially referred to as marine crocodiles or sea crocodiles, though they are not members of Crocodilia. It is believed that Steniosaurus lived in coastal waters where it could hunt for animals like fish as well as possibly other small marine organisms. Teleosaurus had highly elongate jaws, similar to those of a modern gharial. It had a long, slender, body, with a sinuous tail that would have helped propel it through the water. It lived in the open ocean, and it probably caught fish and squid with its sharp, needle-like teeth. Metriorinches had nasal salt glands which, like the salt glands of all other marine reptiles, were used to remove excess salt. This means that it would have been able to drink salt water and eat equally salty prey, such as cephalopods, without dehydrating. Even though it was an effective predator, it was vulnerable to predation from apex predators such as Liaplorodon. It was scavenging on Leedsithus carcasses on the seafloor and even while swimming.
No Geosaurus eggs or nests have been discovered, so little is known of the reptile's life cycle, unlike other large marine reptiles of the Mesozoic, such as ichthyosaurs which are known to give birth to live young out at sea. Where Geosaurus mated, whether on land or at sea, is currently unknown. Dacosaurus was the only marine crocodiliform to have evolved teeth both lateromedially compressed and serrated, not only that, but they were much larger than those of metrorhynchid genera. The early Eocene is marked by abundant warm forests which would have provided plenty of ambush locations for a predator like Pristichampsis to use to surprise prey. The warm climate also helped with a reptilian cold-blooded metabolism so that crocodiles like Pristichampsis could be more active. Traditionally, many paleontologists estimated that Romphosicus was one of the largest, if not the largest crocodilian that ever lived. It probably had a more generalized predatory diet than the Piscivora of other Gavialidae. These crocodiles may have traveled from Africa into Asia when Arabia collided with the Eurasian continent in the early Miocene. New species such as Toyotomaphimaea were present in Japan in the Pleistocene. Gariel is threatened by loss of riverine habitat, depletion of fish resources, and entanglement in fishing nets. As the wild population has declined drastically since the 1930s, the gariel is listed as critically endangered. Its long snout is considered an adaptation to a primarily piscivorous diet. Though it is rarely seen, gariels are known to perform the characteristic death role found in almost all extant crocodilians. Although Dinosuchus was far larger than any modern crocodile, its overall appearance was fairly similar to its smaller relatives. It may have lived for up to 50 years, growing at a rate similar to that of modern crocodilians, but maintaining this growth over a much longer time. It was probably capable of killing and eating large dinosaurs. The distribution of Dinosuchus specimens indicates these giant crocodilians may have preferred estuarine environments. American alligators are apex predators, they play an important role as ecosystem engineers in wetland ecosystems through the creation of alligator holes, which provide both wet and dry habitats for other organisms. Throughout the year, in particular during the breeding season, American alligators bellow to declare territory and locate suitable mates. Male American alligators use infrasound to attract females. Unlike most other land vertebrates, American alligators increase their speed through the distal rather than proximal ends of their limbs. In the water, they swim like fish, moving their pelvic regions and tails from side to side. One of the smallest species of crocodilians, Chinese alligator brumates in burrows during winter. After this period of dormancy, it frequently spends time in the sun before summer begins. Its range is extremely restricted and it is the only species in the family Alligatoridae that lives on a continent other than America. Although the freshwater crocodile does not attack humans as potential prey, it can deliver a nasty bite. Brief and rapidly abandoned attacks have occurred, and were likely the result of mistaken identity. The crocodile's stomach is comparatively acidic than that of any other vertebrate. Nile crocodiles are relatively social crocodiles, their strict hierarchy is determined by size. Large, old males are at the top of this hierarchy and have primary access to food and the best basking spots. Crocodiles tend to respect this order, when it is infringed, the results are often violent and sometimes fatal. It have an extremely powerful bite that is unique among all animals, and sharp conical teeth that sink into flesh, allowing for a grip that is almost impossible to loosen. Nile crocodiles are capable of taking almost any animal within their range. The saltwater crocodile is a large and opportunistic hypercarnivorous apex predator. It ambushes most of its prey and then drowns or swallows it whole. 
It is capable of prevailing over almost any animal that enters its territory, including other apex predators such as sharks. Generally very lethargic, a trait which helps it survive months at a time without food, the saltwater crocodile will usually loiter in the water or bask in the sun during much of the day, preferring to hunt at night. Saltwater crocodiles use ocean currents to travel long distances. 